Welcome into the flagship podcast, everybody. I am Chip Brown of Horns247.com. Very excited to be joined today by uh, Longhorns defensive back, uh, fresh from Pro Day, fresh from the NFL Combine, Josh Thompson. Josh, how you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Hey, man. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you. Love talking ball. I know Longhorns fans are excited to talk some football with spring football starting oh, yeah. uh, this week. But um, let's start with you, my friend. I mean, you go to the NFL Combine. Uh, you run a 4-4-3. Is, and that you know certainly grabbed people's attention for the right reasons. Is that about what you thought you would run? Uh, and tell us about that NFL Combine experience. Uh, so... Talking to my um my trainer from EXO's Brent Calloway, uh, we were expecting me to run around a four four six four four eight somewhere around that range. Uh, but when I say when I got down in that in that forty thing in the forty, and I thought like all my adrenaline started rushing, I was like, yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna be good. So when I took off, I felt that just you know. I felt the right takeoff when I first took off, and I was like, yeah, it's going to be a good one. So when I did get the time back, I was really surprised, but I was like, yeah, okay. I really wasn't surprised, but I was surprised at the same time. Um, but, yeah, like I said, the combine experiences, it was great, you know, just meeting with teams and uh, just enjoying all the the energy around from different players. Uh, but, yeah, it, it was good. Like, like I said, meetings. The only thing that was stressful was probably the medicals that you have to do. But other than that, everything was good. <laughs> yeah, they try to they try to stress you out, right? I mean, that's what all the former players have told me. They, you know, try to keep you mm. up, awake, you know, short of sleep, the yeah. medicals, just see how you perform under stress. Is that I mean, is that kind of what you experienced? Yeah, I, I experienced the same thing, but I like talking to uh, recent players and everything. They kind of told me like that was going to happen, so I was kind of prepared for it when it did take place. So, what did you measure in terms of height and weight? Uh, measured in the height of five eleven, uh, and then my weight was one ninety four. So, I mean, one of the big things about you is your versatility. Um, obviously you've played corner, you've played safety, you've, you've done it all. Um, what were some of the questions you were getting from teams when you were interviewed at the combine? Uh, I was mainly like, you know, background info. Uh, they'll do a couple, a little slight board work, uh, just to see my football IQ. Uh, obviously me playing all those positions and everything in the recent years, uh, helped me understand, uh, the coverage that was given uh each position i was given and i did that and it just surprised a lot of teams and uh, you know a lot of teams had me running a four or five so me going out running a four four that really just you know helped me in a, a major way for a, a, a low four 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 flat even that let's was get, let's get that straight because <laughs> i mean that that stuff makes a big difference especially with a guy you know your size i mean you're a you're a strong sturdy yeah. corner um had that sweet pick six uh <laughs> this season against texas tech oh yeah yeah <laughs> you know talk about talk about that talk about how um it obviously you you committed to texas mm -hmm. under charlie strong right yeah i did and and then you play for tom herman and then steve sarkeesian i mean it's been kind of a revolving door of defenses and defensive coordinators for you Obviously, that was a big challenge. How do you how do you look back on that now? Um, I really think that all of that helped me. Um, at the end of the day, I try not to, like I said, when coaches were coming in and out, like I tried not to, you know, let it get to me. I didn't want to be that player to just go follow a coach or anything. Like when I committed to Texas, I committed to Texas for the school and and you know, just like everything that Texas has to offer. Like I, I didn't do it for a coach. Um, I know coaching jobs are, you know, some come and go and, you know, it's it bring in someone else. But like I said, like I use like I use that like for everything. I've learned different things from different coaches. Like some coaches talk techniques, some coaches talk this, but I picked up all those tools that they gave me and put it in my tool bag. So at the end of the day I took something from each one of those coaches 
and they each one of them helped me at the end of the day and you know like when i went to the combine i used all that what they gave me from their language to everything just to you know be able to transport that language that they gave me to these coaches it really helped me a lot and like i said i don't i don't look at it as a bad thing but i mean it really helped like i said it helped me at the end of the day do you see yourself as more of a corner or more of a nickel or more of a safety at the next level? What? How do you see yourself? Uh, I just see myself really just being around the ball, like the the safety, I guess. I, I would say safety. Um, a lot of coaches said they see me as a safety, uh, just being down in the box, blitzing, uh, you know, a downhill player tackling and stuff like that. Um, but I, I can see myself safety um a little bit of the nickel also what um you know from your time at texas um you know how talk about the journey because you had to wait a minute to get your turn and then as soon as you hit the field you're making plays and there were some injuries in there too but you know talk about your journey um from start to finish at texas uh so it started off well like you know playing special teams that's what i first I fell in love with that um, from the get go. Um, I knew that was that was a way to get on the field, play special teams. Um, so you know, a lot of people came in, uh, you know, like a high recruiting class in 2018. Um, but you know, I just, like I said, I, I came there to work. I just put my head down and and did what I what I usually do, and that's work hard as I can. Um, you know, coaches will see that, and they obviously you know, won't won't have a reason for you not to be able to play, um, but. Like I said, I gave everything on special teams. Um, they they saw how hard I worked in practice. I was a workhorse. Uh, but, you know, once I got on the field, it really just, everything felt so normal and comfortable because of everything that I did on special teams. I mean, like, a lot of people won't think this, but special teams really helps you be able to perform on whatever you're playing, um, just for the physicality sake and everything like that. Um, but overall, I mean, it was it was some days where it was kind of confusing for some parts, but I I never let that get to me because I knew it was all a part of, you know, just staying down till you come up, and I, that's what I did, stay down. Yeah, I mean, it's you know all that turnover, it's not good. It's not yeah. good for the program. All yeah. different coaches and coordinators. You need stability. You need consistency. You need guys to grow together in you know, a system so that they're totally comfortable with it. And that, you know, you, you've had to adjust and learn and relearn. And, and so now as you head to the NFL, it's a plus because you've shown you can do all that. Um, but what was it like in the, in the process, Josh, because I'm looking at this list of safeties who've transferred from Texas, you know, from Xavier Alford and Tyler Owens, um, you know, Chris Adamora, uh, BJ Foster's leaving to, to play a grad transfer season somewhere else. Marcus Caldwell, like, you know, what, what were you experiencing inside the program? Um, I would say it's just coach Sark has a, has a nice plan that he's uh, producing right now. Um, a lot of guys that's that, like I went to the facility like the other day, like right before pro day. And like I honestly, I like I'm being dead serious. Like I've never seen that many guys like have so many like that energy or just like comfortable around each other since the 2018 year. And like it just felt amazing being in there, just seeing every guy in there. You know, like all of them are looking lean, looking bigger. They're happy. They're smiling. Uh, so you can tell, like Coach Beckton, uh, Coach Coach Sark, all those guys are. Um, really laying down the process and I, I really like that for them because you can see some of the freshmen that are coming like they're not coming in to be freshmen you know red shirt those they're coming in to work uh you got guys like Jalen Gilbo uh Terrence Brooks those type of guys like they're they're there for a reason they're, they're trying to play and like you can see it in their eyes and that's what that's something that I can I can look at because I've been through that process so being able to look at them and tell that they're they're serious about it it means a lot but like i said he has he has something down that's going to help them in the in the coming years and I, i'm ready to see it um we'll we'll get uh we'll get 
some of Josh's thoughts on some of the other guys who are returning, like Anthony Cook, uh-huh. uh, who's going to be moving to, to safety, yeah. it looks like. We'll take a quick break with Josh Thompson here on the Flagship Podcast. Don't go anywhere. And if you're watching us on the Horns 24-7 YouTube channel, we'll roll on. Um, Josh, the, uh, you know, the looks like Anthony Cook's moving from nickel to safety. Um, that's that's going to be important because of all those transfers I just mentioned. I mean, you got Jaron Thompson. Uh, what what are your thoughts on Anthony Cook making that move? Um, Cook is a is a is a beast, man. That's somebody on the field last year that I can honestly like just look at and we'll be on the same page. Like that's somebody that that plays hard. He goes hard. He does extra work. He takes care of his body. Um, that's that's he's going to be a, a name to be remembered after this year. Uh, I'm just I'm just happy to see him. Uh, but him being in the back of that secondary with all those young guys means it, it's going to be a lot, uh, mainly because he knows uh, that he's the the voice of the defense now. Um, he has to communicate. He has to do everything, and that's going to help him in his game. Um, but yeah, he's gonna he's gonna play take major a major leap next year from the this position that he's playing now. And Jaron Thompson obviously uh, got experience this past year. Um, what does he need to do to take the next step? Uh, I would just say, just I mean, Jaron came in one of those guys. You know, you have that freshman that comes in and leads. <laughs> he was one of those guys, and that everybody was like. Okay, all right. Well, we gotta accept him because he's leading, so you can't really like ignore him. Um, but like he's he's leading well. Um, he just needs to stay stay focused in the season and everything else, and that he he he'll make the same leap as he did uh, as as well as Cook. Um, but like I said, like Jaron, he's a ball player. Uh, you got a lot of guys in that secondary that's really about ball, and I I like it now. <laughs> So if you had a chance, you, you mentioned Gilbo and Terrence Brooks. Have you had a chance to see Ryan Watts? I saw him. And when I first saw him, I thought he was a, he, he was tall as hell. I was like, who is this? <laughs> but they got some length in that corner room. Uh, Ryan Watts, is, he's, a, he's tall. He got some good length on him. I was like, got to be a receiver. And then I seen him turn the le- turn a re- uh, left in the corner room. I was like, oh, that got to be uh, Ryan. <laughs> but, yeah, he has some, he has some um, height on him. I haven't seen him like work out or anything, but what I've heard, he's doing real well. So, what uh, what what needs to happen for the defense, Josh? Because at times last year, defense was outstanding. I mean, even in the first half of the Arkansas game, first half of the Iowa State game, and then there were other games where it seemed like uh, the defense was on its heels. Maybe not always on the same page in terms of the front and the back of the defense being tied together. What was it in your opinion? Um, I would say everybody has to be on the same page. Um, you have in the first half, everybody's doing the same thing. Like, you know, everybody's communicating. And in the second half, it feels like other communication and stuff falls off. Uh, but once the, the communication becomes consistent, uh, everything will, will, will be straight for the defense. Um, that's the main thing I look at. Uh, it's the communication part of the, the football field, uh, knowing where your player's at. Uh, and obviously, it's just like with a new f- defensive coordinator, you're trying to still learn or still be able to, you know, make it 100% of what you're doing. Um, and I feel like a na- another year with, with PK, uh, especially this year, uh, those players are will get more comfortable in the playbook instead of being robots and everything like that. Um, but being consistent with communication and learning the playbook, uh, which I can see those guys doing because there's a lot of guys staying extra in the film room um, when I walked up there the other day. Um, but everything is just going so smooth for them. And uh, like I said, I'm happy to see them this year. Um, but, like, yeah, consistent of communication. That's, that's the main. One question I had was with PK up in the box, mm-hmm. like as the second half and adjustments are needing to be made, like, how was he communicating those adjustments without being on the sideline? Was was it going through one coach or was it, you know, all the different position coaches? How was that communication yeah. getting? We'll talk about everything that we need to fix in a locker room and at halftime. Um, but everything else uh, to be 
corrections from, you know, him relaying it to Coach Joseph or somebody like that. Um, but, yeah, they'll, they'll usually communicate well. We just, like, they did everything they had to do. Like I said, it's just the players to go out and do what they're supposed to do. And, like, those coaches are a real deal. And, like I said, the players get to follow along. And once everything and everyone buy in, it's going to be serious. What, um, I mean, obviously you, you, you know, played with, Hudson Card now Quinn Ewers is on campus. Have you had a chance to see the quarterbacks at all? Uh, I I usually talk to Hudson every now and then just to check in with him, see how everything's going. Haven't haven't seen haven't seen Hudson um, since I've been here. I've seen him at pro day, but I haven't seen uh, Quinn or anything. Uh, haven't really like you know I try to stay out of those guys those guys ear about you know what's happening with this and what's happening with that because. I mean, at the end of the day, those coaches are going to see who's who's playing the hardest and who wants it more. So, like, I'm not the coach, so I can't <laughs> I can't make the calls. <laughs> well, what about your man Deshaun Jameson um, mm-hmm. coming back for his COVID redshirt year? Uh, obviously, going to have some competition from the guys, the younger guys we just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, but what about Deshaun? What what stands out about him? Uh, his athleticism, uh, he just he does a lot of things that a lot of people don't really, you know, look at. Uh, I've been staying on him for this last two months, like, staying on him heavy. Like, I'll call him every day, like, what you eat today? You know, just making sure he's eating well, not doing anything crazy or anything, because I want, I want to see him make that, that leap this year. And I want to, I want to make sure that he has the, the best focus that he can have um, and, you know, take it from there. Uh, He's a hard worker. He does everything he's supposed to do. Um, like I said, I want to see him make that leap this year, whatever he does. And and I, I've been calling him, making, like I said, being a big brother towards him, really. He, like, I'll call him and answer, be like, what, what is it now? I'll be like, I'm just trying to check on you. <laughs> hey, that's what it takes. I mean, that's when the magic happens, when the players are policing each other. I mean, Vince Young told me, uh, you know, in 05, I said, give me an example of your leadership. And yeah. he said, keeping after Ramon's Taylor was a full-time job, you know, and, and it takes that, yeah. right? I mean, it takes players holding each other accountable, pushing each other. You got to have that stuff. Got to have it. Got to have it. All right. So when you, uh, um, you had a, you could have come back for another year, mm-hmm. right? So what went into your decision to to make the move into the NFL draft? Uh, it was just, I don't know. I feel like it was my time. Like, you know, a lot of people, like, always answer, ask that question. But at the same time, just like, you know, you go through so much at, at Texas from coaching changes to everything like that. It can be mentally, like, exhausted. And, you know, not having the year that we wanted this year, um, having a bunch of new guys come in. I just think, like I said, I think Texas needed, needed another start at where they needed to be. And I felt like what I had like a decent year. So, I, you know, everything just fell into place for me to just go ahead and declare for the draft. Um, but I, I still, you know, still have my, my boys with Texas. I love Texas. Like it was nothing against that. It was more so the fact that I wanted to be my best version of me and some guys their best version of them is at the next level. So I wanted to just go ahead and take my my next leap, I would say. <laughs> well, and we've seen that, Josh. We've seen it from guys like Adrian Phillips, yeah. you know, guys who, you know, kind of were under the radar coming out but have gone on to, you know, have really productive NFL careers. Yeah. I, I agree. I told Taylor on the flagship podcast, I think your best football is ahead of you because you yeah. will – kill it on special teams which you'll have to do you have to do that <laughs> yeah you got to do that yeah. and and adrian phillips will tell you that who who are the guys i know earl thomas was out at pro day i mean who are the guys you've been talking to to get some advice about uh this whole draft experience and as you transition to pro football i would say quandre Diggs is one i've um, been talking to him a lot i look at him like a you know mentor or whatever um then, like, just the recent guys that have been through the process, the people that I've graduated with, like Juan Graham, Stan Bellinger, uh, or Brandon Jones, of course. Uh, guys like that, Caden Stearns, 
I mean, they all been through it, even though they haven't had the the full combine experience um, because of the COVID COVID year that went on. So I I still been talking to them, but I've been talking to Quandre a lot, um, Huff, Michael Huff, uh, those type of guys. I try to keep a a good group around me, a good mindset, so I won't like you know. I just try to take in as much as I can from those type of guys because I know in the future they help me. Um, that's why I tried not to stress when I was at the combine because they all told me like you're going to you're going to be up, you're going to be doing this, you're going to be stressed. You, you know, I, I kind of took that and ran with it, so <laughs> I was pretty good at the combine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you you have your performance at the combine. Um, you know, you doing individual workouts for teams. Uh, I haven't had any individual workouts yet, but I've been having a lot of like, you know, meetings or whatever um, through Zoom or whatever it is. Uh, on the, some people, some teams just randomly call me, just checking in, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I think, I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot of teams are really not always that athletic. Um, so it's really kind of opening doors for me right now. So I would say that. <laughs> well, and when you, um, you know, you're talking to your agent. <laughs> Do you have a feel for like where you might go in the draft or? I try not to, you know, ask my agent that like I, I'll never, I, I, I don't, I don't have a plan. Like I, I try not to go in there and be like, just bug him all the time. Like, Hey, what am I going to do? Like, where am I getting drafted? This and that. Um, but I, I know it's not my plan. It's all God's plan. Uh, so it's going to follow what God has in store for me and use that. Well, you were up there at the combine with Cameron Dicker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know uh, what? What stands out about him, Josh? Because I know kickers and punters sometimes are like the the weirdos in the group, but <laughs> or you know what? What stands out about Dicker? Uh, Dicker is just Dicker. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else to explain it. Like he just he never changes. Like he's gonna be himself. Like from day one, <laughs> he doesn't. He like. He's he's hilarious. Like he like when we were at the Senior Bowl, you know, it was me me and him walking around. He was like, "Yeah, it's just just me and you." I was like, "Yeah, it is." <laughs> but like I said, Dicker just he's one of a kind, man. He's a team would be lovely to get him. Um, he just he just has that kicker energy. I don't know what it is, but he just has a kicker vibe, <laughs> and that's what it is. <laughs> well, when you look at you know maybe a comparison because it seems like the NFL they compare guys all the time yeah do you compare your your game to anyone i try not to i look at different so i don't have a favorite player as i would say but i look at different players and try to take something from them if you know what i mean like jamal adams physicality uh quandre Diggs, like you know how he reacts to the ball in the post um it's just different guys that i look at like i really honestly is I had never had a favorite player. I probably had one favorite player, and that was probably Adrian Peterson when he played with the with the Vikings. Um, but ever since then, like I just look at different guys in the secondary, and you know, like Rod Woodson. Uh, he's probably one of my one of my favorite guys to look at, even though it's like back then. But I don't I don't care. I just like the his style of play. Um, but everything like that, like I, like I said, I just look at. Like I try to take something from each player and put it in my my little, my little toolbox. <laughs> well, before we let you go, I think fans, Texas fans, always love to hear you know what's going on mm -hmm. inside the program, the relationship with the coaches. You mentioned Steve Sarkeesian. Mm -hmm. you know, it seems like he's got it going now. What you know? How would you describe Sarkeesian and and his way of of doing things and um you know, what stands out about him as a coach? Um, I would say Coach Sarkeesian, like, he came in and you just felt his vibe. Like, he's one of those, like, he's like a real coach. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I love everything that he has in store for this program. Uh, he makes sure that we have the best mindset, uh, the best things capable of doing, all the resources. Um, and he, like, with school, everything, like, he, he wants – he believes in, you know, you do you do everything right outside of football, then life will be easy with football. Um, so, like, Coach Sarkeesian, Coach Becton, Coach Joseph, like, those are, like, some real deal. Like, 
those are coaches. Like I've never seen any. Like when they came in, I said, okay, okay yeah. Like I, I took everything in from them, and I just went and took it like on the football field. You know, I, I didn't let it didn't let it fail me. Uh, Coach Beckin has a great strength program going on right now. Coach Sarkeesian is he's just he's just amazing, man. I, I don't even know what it is like. It would be times where I just wanted to talk to someone, and I just go talk to him. We can just sit there and talk talk about things other than football, and that's what I love about him. Yeah, that's great because yeah. it, you know, from the outside last year it got a little rough, right? I mean, there was a stretch where team wasn't winning. There yeah. were off the field stuff. The Bo Davis video gets leaked, and you know, you're wondering how's Sarkeesian handling this stuff yeah. behind the scenes. How how did he handle it? Uh, he he took it like he, like a head coach is supposed to do. Um, whoever made the video, they have to serve the consequences for it. Uh, with the Bo Davis situation, um, he just told us like it's a it's a bump in the road right now. We're gonna have to get through it. Uh, we still practice hard. He didn't change up anything of practice and anything in our schedule. We stayed the same. Um, that's one thing that really stood out to me because no matter what's going on, he's gonna stay the same. And you can see the improvement by the end of the year when we played Kansas State. Was, that game was just different. Like we were down so many players, and everybody was still playing to the best of their ability. And uh, but like I said, Coach Sarkeesian has like a a laid out plan, and I'm I'm loving it. And like, like I said, everything is going to fall in place. He doesn't change. He's going to be the same him. Uh, and it's gonna it's everyone once everyone pick up on that picks up on that it's going to be serious for the next couple of years <laughs> well when you look at this entire defense not just the secondary who who are guys you know you said you were on jameson to mm -hmm. to stay after it who are the guys who need to take the next step for this defense to really shine i would say to Vondre sweat um he has a, a his size and everything once he takes that next leap, um, he'll be he's gonna be dangerous. Uh, and I, I've been telling him that. <laughs> I've I've been on him about that. So I've been telling him, uh, you know, you got guys like Jalen Ford, uh, those type of guys. I mean, he, they're they're ball players, like like they love ball. And once they like I said, when I saw walked in the locker room the other day, they were happy, you know, all this and that. And I was like, Yeah, they they found it. They're they're good now. So you know, Coach Beck and keeping those guys' minds straight and talking to them all the time and just, like, you know, being there for them, like the new coaching staff will be, you know, I'm proud to see that leap that they're going to have this year. What about Alfred Collins? Because he's like a beast. Uh -huh. I mean, just got all the NFL measurables. What <laughs> What's going on with my man Alfred Collins? AC, is, he's a beast. Uh, he, I, you know, being a, a young guy, you know, coming into a program, like I've been through it, you know, getting new coaches and everything, uh, from a new D coordinator and adjusting to the playbook and everything. Uh but like I said, this year he's gonna be serious. Uh like a but being a young guy, you know, getting a playbook like that that they had last year, uh, it's it's something that you have to invest in. And once you invest in it, then you're you'll see your gameplay go up and you just have to trust the process. And with Alfred I'm I'm ready to see him this year because uh, you can see how towards the end of the year he started to get you know a little bit a, a lot of a lot of shine as I would say, um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be great to see him also. I mean, they got to get a pass rush to help those corners. You know, yeah. if you got a pass rush, you're gonna get some more interceptions. You're gonna get you know more PBUs. So who's who's the guy who can rush the passer? Rush the passer. See, I would say AC, honestly. Yeah. AC. Uh, you know, Keandre and uh Savandre, uh, they they can cause disruption up the middle. Uh you have guys like Moro. Moro is nice. I, his gameplay is so nice. Like I just love the way his engine and everything. Uh he can definitely get to the quarterback and every and all that. Um you just I'm just happy to see them this year. Like it's it's crazy. <laughs> All right, so give us a player who could surprise in 2022. Okay, uh, I would say Terrence Brooks. 
Okay. Terrence Brooks. Freshman. Freshman. What do you like about him? He's just I so I hosted him when he first when he came to visit on his official visit. And I told him, I was like, hey, you you have everything here. Like, why would you go somewhere else? And then he committed to Ohio State. I texted him, I was like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He got when he texted me the night before he signed that he was like, I'm coming to Texas. I was like, All right, let's go. I was like, I don't believe it though. And he was like, All right, you just have to see it in. And so he sent me a little edit or whatever. And you know, I've just been as one guy that that texts me whenever he needs or has a question or about something. But him and Jalen Gilbo, like those are some, some dogs. Like I, I love like Jalen Gilbo is a workhorse. I've heard and you know Terrence's technique is. Technique is so nice. So everything you, once they fall in love with, like I said, they gotta fall in love with the playbook. I've been pushing that on them. Um, you know, just texting them regularly, like you know, getting fall in love with the playbook. When spring ball comes, take spring ball serious. Don't use it as a joke because you can, you know, go down in your game if you use it as a joke. Uh, take it serious, like it's a job. And they'll, with Terrence Brooks, I'm ready to see him shine. <laughs> So are you going to be working out uh, in Austin, or where are you working out? Are you working out in Dallas? Uh, I'm in Austin right now. I've been training with uh, working out every day with Jay Hill. Okay. At Collective. Yep. I've been going there. Then I'll go stretch, um, do some stuff, keep my hips open and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Jeremy Hills, baby. The Collective. Yeah, those workouts are tough. Oh, well. <laughs> Josh, man, um, congratulations again on the great NFL Combine performance. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're excited to see, you know, what's next for you. And uh, and let's stay in touch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And thanks to everybody for listening to the flagship podcast interview. For Josh Thompson, I am Chip Brown. We'll see you over at horns247.com. Until next time, stay safe and keep the faith.